Boom. Look at that. That's a starting. That's a, yeah, it's like a gong to kick it off. It's a baby gong. It's a baby gong. Yeah, really. I mean, on top of the book, The Way of the Shaman. I've read that book. I know I haven't. I'm going to stop. But, how's it going, man? It's going good. Yeah. It's been, it has been a while before we uh, got on the FaceTime a while ago. It's yeah, it's been a couple of years at least. At least, definitely. definitely. You look a lot older. I know. And, uh, I'm happy to see you. Thank you. What you came about. Yeah, no, you look good too, man. You look yeah. really good. You know, you got a beard now. Yeah. Yeah. It looks good. I, I like. Might not stick around for a long time. Really? Yeah. You're gonna go baby face? I, I like the baby face. Really? It's uh, smoother, like more aerodynamic. It just kind of, yeah. I don't know. More aerodynamic for what? Uh, when I walk. <laughs> 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 gotta get to those meetings. Yeah, bro. you know, sometimes like when you're just really gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> so you can't <laughs> miss a moment. My baby face makes me look fat, so like I have to keep it. Yeah, yeah. hide a beard. Yeah, yeah. yeah Sells on Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I have kind of a double chin going on. Yeah. So I gotta keep it there so that it distracts people. Yeah. But then they just make fun of me and tell me it looks like pubes. So. <laughs> so I really. You pick which yeah. one's yeah. worse. There's no winning. Better. There's no winning really. Yeah. It's either you got pubes on your face or why do you have a double chin? So. Yeah. I'll stick with what I got. Yeah. Uh, anyways, I know uh, when we were in, you know, when we were in high school, the last year that we went to school together. You had some really bad head injuries and neck injuries. Yep. And I'm, this has to play into what your product is, right? Yeah, so to recap the head injuries, just so you hear what really happened was I got seven concussions within one year. So uh, they were all at St. Paul's or out doing other stuff. Most of them were sports related, but really it just was a, a bad time for hitting my head against the wall. Mm -hmm. um, really. Uh, shifted my life. It made me uh, need to leave the school mm -hmm. um, and uh, really dealt with some negative symptoms for quite some time. Um, fast forward, you know, three years after that, almost completely symptom free. Mm -hmm. um, so really doing a lot better. Um, you know, time was on my side, obviously, as it is with everything. If you just wait, it'll it'll kind of pass. Yeah, definitely ties into my product though. Um, at the time, I grew a huge ty um, tolerance to Tylenol and Advil. Mm -hmm let alone those being very destructive to the body. Um, this ended up being a natural solution that uh, I was able to get my hands on and really was the only thing that worked uh, for the, he the headaches that I was suffering from. Um, so simply just applying it on the head, uh, right on the temples where you need it, mm -hmm. um, I was able to you know, bring down uh, the pulsing, throbbing headaches that uh, I was really going through. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a heaven sent, you know, like a yeah. really uh, beautiful, all natural way that I was able to at least cope with some of the uh, the pains that were coming with it. For sure. When did you decide that like CBD or cannabis was the way to go? <laughs> I'm probably 14 years old. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, my interactions with cannabis were a lot before that. Mm -hmm. And so it's nice to know that um, as I got introduced it, it, to it at such a young age um, and you know, played around with it, I then would require it and mm -hmm. I was comfortable getting into it. And when I needed it at the time I needed it most, it was I knew exactly what to do and how to use it, um, so it, I wasn't left, you know, struggling for too long. I'll say mm -hmm. in regards to that. So, um, yeah, just getting into cannabis as any, you know, shy young kid gets into it. Of, yeah. You know, best friend's older brother. Uh, yeah. Kinda, yeah. You know, hands you the pipe and says, "Hey, uh, yeah, try this." And I did, and I uh, never looked back. All the negative bullshit that I heard before was washed away in those few moments of my inhalation and exhalation <laughs> and uh, then yeah I just uh, was curious and I went deeper and deeper. Yeah one rip of the devil's lettuce and you were sold. Man no exactly. Absolutely. You, you never go back. True that's fact. I mean so let's talk a bit about the concussions because like you said some of them were sports related some of them weren't. Was it like you lost on Xbox Live <laughs> and you just couldn't handle it? I wish. That, that, would be a, that would be a good story. Um, definitely uh, no I never lost on Xbox Live. So. <laughs> <laughs> no need to worry about it. Yeah, good to hear. We're all undefeated. So. Yeah, exactly. But uh, no, uh, they were basketball, football, uh, the Red River X. Uh, were you climbing the Ferris wheel? No, it was on the zipper. Oh. So you know oh. the zipper, it like goes round and you know, a few two drinks, too many drinks, you just let your neck kind of go with it. One, too many Ooh. turns, just whiplash. And, yeah, so, and then once you're even more sensitive to the concussions, it just becomes easier and easier. Yeah. Um, and then after that was actually at the St. Paul's Walk uh, on the bouncy, uh, bouncy castle type thing. Really? Yeah, you know the one that had the uh, bungee cord strapped yeah. to your back? You ran as far as you could, placed a beanbag. Third time around, it flipped me, landed on my neck, whiplash again. Damn. Um, so, yeah, uh, 
never stepped foot on a bouncy castle after that. Really? Just kidding. <laughs> but every weekend. Yeah, <laughs> legit. I bought one. I mastered it. That's where you moved in, right? You said you got a new place. Yeah, a new place. It's just I uh, got it at Toys R Us. Uh, <laughs> electricity not included. <laughs> or batteries. How is it in the wintertime, you know? Um, it's a little rough. Yeah, it's a little airy. Yeah, a little airy. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of breeze here. Yeah. You go inside the actual castle. <laughs> yeah, it's like the Star Wars scene where he cuts open the... Uh, <laughs> the thong -tong. Yeah, and then sleeps inside with all the organs. Yeah. You know, you adapt, right? You, yeah. You live a frugal life, but you live an exciting one. That's the most exciting thing about evolution. Yeah. You know, can't afford a roof over your head, just get a bouncy castle and cut it open with a switchblade. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You don't even have to buy the switchblade, you just take it from a homeless guy. Yeah, exactly. That's where I go to when I need my Home Depot supplies. <laughs> But after that, oh. <laughs> I was just gonna say homeless deep. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They're cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so like, what does this product exactly do? Because I know you're saying that like it's modified, so it goes a bit further than some of the other products. Yeah. Out. So uh, what it is, it's a full spectrum infusion. So it's mm. not just a CBD product. Uh, that's really what sets it apart from uh, most CBD products out there, cannabis infusion stuff like that. Um, as well as it's no trim, so it's you know the actual bud of what you would smoke. So for the people that don't know, CBD, what are the benefits of CBD? So CBD is a single compound. Cannabis includes about 104 compounds. Mm -hmm. um, CBD is uh, one of the more medicinal ones. It's anti-inflammatory. Mm -hmm. It really helps with, mostly it's inflammation, mm -hmm. some regulation of other you know, hormonal actions in the body, um, but it's the non-psychoactive one. So that's why I saw the hype now is you know people who are not introduced to cannabis or are familiar with it or not wanting it high in any sense uh, are really being sold and, and brought towards CBD mm -hmm. uh, due to it not being psychoactive, it's able to get legalized way faster like the hemp-derived CBD which has already been on the market for you know a year or two. Mm -hmm. um, that, that is the, the main property of it, really just anti-inflammation. Um, the other components, you know, like THC, CBG, CBN, uh, other, there's a, a whole whack of them, mm -hmm. they kind of get from the main ones and they go smaller and smaller. All of them are super beneficial, um, specifically when applied topically um, or ingested, smoked or anything like that. Um, as long as they're maintained in their you know, original states, uh, meaning not burned by a flame, that's why it's not that effective to smoke weed for pain relief or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It'll make you forget about the pain but doesn't actually treat it. Um, regarding the, the topical salve is what allows it to not only deal with the CBD and be wonderful for any kind of inflammation that you're dealing with in the body, but also whether it be skin damage or yeah. scar or eczema or um, nerve damage or, or anything that's not just, uh, just something that's inflamed. It's mm -hmm. really wonderful as a full spectrum, uh, really attacking um, many, many different uh, things that you deal with. Yeah, for sure. And so, like you said, it's when you burn it with a flame, it doesn't have as many benefits. Yeah. If somebody were to come up to you and say, oh, well, all that other stuff is in there, so it's not nearly as good. Yeah. How do you counter that? So, like, are you saying if someone says, oh, THC is in there? Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, I mean, I just explained to them, like, uh, the, you know, raw science behind it is that uh, the plant comes in a specific way that's how it's meant to be utilized that's mm -hmm. the most effective way of utilizing it um, and the THC doesn't get you high even if you were to use this product a lot you don't even test positive on a drug test because really? yeah we have CB1 and CB2 receptors in our epidural skin level and so it's the first four layers of our skin and that's where the the CBD THC all the compounds are actually utilized and processed mm -hmm. so they don't in turn get so soaked into the body put into the bloodstream, transferred to the brain, then redirect it to where it needs to go in the body. Mm -hmm. If you apply it right where you need it, and that's where it gets utilized, processed. And so what does end up getting into the bloodstream is an already broken down, non-psychoactive uh, aspect or component of the product. So really, there's no need to worry. Kids can use it. You can use it all day long. Mm -hmm. If you're getting drug tested, if you have you know, a fear of getting high in any way like that, it's really a, a versatile product for those people as well. So how come other companies aren't using cannabis in its purest form and they're just using the CBD. Is that just because it's all the rage now? Or? Yeah, so with the Industrial Hemp Act, which was uh, passed uh, not too long ago, mm -hmm. um, that allowed companies to extract CBD from hemp plants, uh, which had a way better uh, ability to get to the market faster or from le a legal standpoint, due to the fact that you know the cannabis grown from it um, is not as dense or it's not as potent. Most of the breeding has been for the stalk or the leaves, so the, the actual textile tangible value 
value of the the whole plant versus just been breeding like cannabis for the the bud itself and the flower. Yeah. Um, so you can extract the CBD from those uh, plants. So once it got legalized, then everything that came with it, you know, obviously came with it as well. Mm -hmm. um, but actually, the CBD that comes from the the hemp is not as uh, accessible, potent, strong, beneficial as the CBD that comes naturally from uh, the cannabis because mm -hmm. the plant wasn't bred over you know in the past let's say 100 years or something like that mm -hmm. the genetics that are being used um, to incorporate better and higher CBD levels it just comes naturally with the plant it's just been bred to decrease the THC and anytime you limit something that's in there it's not balanced yeah. anymore it doesn't have that same symbiosis or you know uh, yeah. compatibility together um, but it's easier for the, the industry to incorporate hemp and just CBD products, one based on the highness. You know, yeah. if you say THC, it's a, a buzzword, it's a kill shot for any product trying to get to market. Yeah. Because some people don't want to get high, some people are just afraid of it. Uh, there's really a taboo around it that, yeah. uh, or an ignorance around it that isn't allowing um, it to flourish in the way that it should. For sure, and I'm sure that's just, like you said, it's the ignorance, people don't know what it is, right? Yeah. I mean, look how long it took for marijuana to be legalized in general. Yeah. And it's probably the same thing with C THC, sorry, my bad. Yeah. Uh, so, like, what separates your product from, I don't know, somebody would go to Delta 9 and try to pick up something there? Yeah, so those would just be single, uh, single infusion. Well. Yeah, just CBD technically on the market is just mm -hmm. allowed now. Okay. Um, they would have, you know, cannabis uh, that you could smoke that has full THC, and that, that's mm -hmm. the same thing that you're, you're getting anywhere pretty much. Yeah. Uh, but in regards to their products, at least what they present on the table, I know they have some under the table that they'll um, offer to people if you ask properly. Mm -hmm. um, but those are, you know, just easier to be out there um, just based on regulations. Um, and so I've, you know, taken the leap and wanted to push something that is top quality, that works for the people. No matter what anyone says, something that I believe and know in is working for people and all my clients believe and know it just as much for sure um, so that's why uh, I offer it um, without any hesitation yeah so I mean like I'm sure people have questions about like, the legalities and everything like that I mean weeds technically legal that now is it just still the buzzword of THC that's preventing people from selling the entire infusion or I would say leading up to, to this around point, something leading up to this point yes the actual regulations are coming in this October mm -hmm. for topicals but it wouldn't be till about December when the the product would actually be on shelves um, but it is about the THC you know um, it is about the um, worriedness you know once we let a product out there then the world has the product or the country has the product and and people can do what they want with it so they're taking as many precautions as they can to you know save face and not make mistakes uh, or anything like that which is um, totally you know legitimate or you know understandable mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time they're not going to the real experts um, to, to ask these questions and, and get to them because the real experts are shunned and said to be criminals yeah even though yes there's total criminals in the whole cannabis side before legalization uh, but at the same times there are compassionate loving individuals who really were just in it for the people and they learned yeah. along the way or that's their you know soul life and passion um, but they've kind of neglected them and said you know you have to have certain degrees and not have partaken in any cannabis research before which would all be deemed illegal and so who they're looking for now is kind of you know safe pen pe safe pencil pushers I'll say yeah and I mean above all else you said you're sure there are some people out there who are compassionate who care about the people above all else I'm sure they're knowledgeable about it yeah why would you cut corners with people who know what they're doing just because yeah they had a criminal record because they sold weed before yeah and I mean even if they weren't even charged mm -hmm. like even just say like they ask where your credibility is and you say well I've just been doing this for the past 20 years and they say well you know you're not credible but I get it, it's them saving face. If someone asks them questions, where did this person come from? Then it's just you know a bunch of people trying to be the best or on the right side of the tracks. Mm -hmm. And when in reality, you know, if we all lived uh, as a society from doing you know what the best is in general, meaning you know finding the best experts and honoring people and and being compassionate with it all, then uh, maybe we'll we'll get there one day at least. Most definitely, yeah. So can you talk about how the product is made? So yeah, it's a full day cook, um, and the, the infusion is the cannabis, the flour, into the coconut oil and the grapeseed oil, which are the oil bases. Mm -hmm. um, and then we use uh, simple ingredients like uh, local beeswax, um, vitamin E oil, and organic essential oils. Mm -hmm. um, and so we keep it that simple just because uh, whatever you put on the skin should be totally edible at least. If, it's, if, you're not, if you shouldn't put it in your mouth, you probably shouldn't put it on your skin. Um, so we keep those simple ingredients so that it is safe enough 
for any person to use. It doesn't have any irritants or allergens, as well as the simplicity allows it to soak in and saturate faster, uh, more effectively, uh, while carrying just the you know uh, cannabis compounds that is what's doing all the magic from this product. Um, it's not you know getting washed out by uh, additives and flavors or extra you know shea butters and stuff like that, which are wonderful. But at the end of the day. You know, this is what is uh, allowing it to be the most accessible um, and really uh, being able to be utilized by the skin efficiently. Definitely, you could keep it simple, right? You don't want to yeah. you don't want to water it down too much because exactly. then it, it loses its purpose. Yeah, the more you put in there, the less cannabis there is. So really, Absolutely. just keep it as much as allows. Yeah. So how long did it come? How long did it take to come up with this formula or to come up with uh, the full idea? Like what we see now. Yeah. So I mean, like this product. Um, I've been using a similar one for about two and a half years. Um, that was when I was in my concussion uh, issues, um, and I was shipping that in from BC. Um, this, uh, so I understood the product, I knew what it was, I knew the benefits of it. Mm -hmm. What I saw was room for improvement, whether it be with potency, um, consistency, ingredients, uh, as well as location, right? Mm -hmm. All of it was coming from the West Coast, there was nothing coming uh, from the center uh, of Canada. Um, and so, really, uh, once I got on track with what I wanted to create, then, you know, a couple weeks of research, some trial and error, um, and, you know, I'm just allowing intuition to honestly guide me in how I should should create the product. Um, it turned out to be uh, what it was. And first batch was able to uh, sell to people and, and nice. people were able to utilize it right off the hop and uh, after some self-testing, of course. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it worked phenomenal. And how did you test that? Did you just use it? Yeah, so I have minor scoliosis in my lower back. Okay. Um, I still get headaches the odd time. I get you know muscle pains and mm -hmm. sports injuries still kind of mm -hmm. reflecting. Um, and so I have the ability to self-test as well as one of the reasons why I started the product was for my family um, So like my dad he got his, he had to get his knee replaced last September So before that he was dealing with a really bum knee almost you know 50% of the cartilage was gone uh, It was really limiting him. So I had a perfect candidate and he's probably my best salesman now like mm -hmm. he really uh, he really believes in the product, loves the product, and loves to ta talk about it because now he can go to the gym every single day uh, and really be uh, the, the person that he wanted to be and, and wasn't able to be for so long. Mm -hmm. um, and other family that have chronic issues and pain and stuff like that. So I was able to test it within a, a good circle of uh, pain issues. Yeah. Was there any batches that didn't go well? Like, no, uh, there wasn't. got fried? <laughs> uh, I mean, did that go bad or did that go well? Right? Like, so yeah, it is an edible product. I mean, they all do taste very well. Uh, really? I'll, I'll be the first one to say that. Um, but it's totally intended as a topical. Um, all the batches went well, and as I progressed, I used to make a batch a week. Mm -hmm. I only made about thirty in one batch. Okay. Um, but uh, now I've moved up to making you know three hundred in a batch, okay. and so. Um, each batch that goes on, you know, I'm refining, I'm making it, you know, stronger or, you know, mm -hmm. cleaning up loose ends and stuff like that. So as the past, you know, over a year has progressed, it's been refined and, and really uh, solidified. Yeah. Can you put this in a vape or what? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. You, I, I wouldn't I mean, recommend I got that. one on. Yeah. <laughs> I really wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> You'd be coming back for a bill uh, to pay for that. <laughs> I mean, so like when you take a look at this company and obviously, I mean, you have short term goals, long term goals. What's what are some of your long-term goals with this? I mean, long-term big goal is, you know, everyone with a product would love to be like the next Advil, mm -hmm. especially with a product that's so helpful and uh, safe for people. There's not actually causing any damage. Um, but in the end, um, I've been really satisfied with the amount of clients that I've, I've been able to reach so far. Um, and being a single operator, owner-operator, um, I've filled my day. This has been my full-time job for, mm -hmm. you know, almost you know, 14 years. 14 months or some 15 nice. months or something like that um, so yeah short-term goals I'd say uh, you know getting it on more store shelves as we are in jellyfish float right now mm -hmm. uh, we just got on their shelf and generation green uh, in the exchange we're on their shelf as well so nice. just as as many as we can get um, as well as I, I'd say big goals is you know getting cross Canada just being nice. able to um, enjoy and, and see uh, people benefit across and there's no real uh, product like this? 
Across um, Canada? There's other ones. There's not, I'll, like, I'll say the product that I was shipping from BC. Mm -hmm. um, that's technically across Canada. Um, but there was room for improvement. There was, you know, yeah. it was just a single or a double compound extraction, just THC and CBD, not full spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, there were fillers. It, it, you know, after a year, it would kind of go rancid, I'll say, and not smell so good. It wasn't as potent, so you needed to actually lose, use a lot in order to feel the benefits. So mm -hmm. um, I'd say there's maybe not a product to this standard. Um, it's unique. Yeah, unique. And I mean, like, Good. not technically, but it's got my blood, sweat, and tears in it. And uh, you gotta improve that, man. Yeah, put them in there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, want it in there. Yeah, maybe that's the one thing, you know, for my loyal that clients. Little, mm. Yeah, <laughs> extra five bucks. Yeah. Just yeah, get a nice like kick of malaria. Yeah. yeah. And just, well, I'm clean, man. I get tested. Really? Right? <laughs> just okay. for malaria. Well, that's unfortunate. Just for <laughs> everything else, I'm pretty fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> Stop testing for that long. <laughs> yeah, true, true. So I mean, uh, yeah, I won't say that. Uh, what, what are some of the obstacles that you've encountered? With um, so obstacles are, you know, regulations. Mm -hmm. um, people just, you know, feeling a little sour about the product. They think they know something about cannabis, um, and in the end, they're not correct. Mm -hmm. Yet they, you know, rule it or keep that thought with, you know, an iron sword. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, that, that's kind of been the obstacles. It's, it's a wonderful product that's work, working for so many people and helping everyone and not doing any harm, yet it's a hard, it, there's no market for it yet that I can just like freely flash it around and get it in every store. Yeah. Even though my testimonials are like five out of five stars, that would then encourage everybody to get their hands on this and uh, you know sell it or use it or share it with someone they love. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, really just kind of regulations and um, I guess sour people who necessarily don't know the truth, but have learned something and felt something for so long that they want to defend that for themselves because it maybe it's self identity to themselves. Yeah, of course. I, mean, I know you. You said you haven't smoked cannabis, but I've not. obviously you're fine talking about it and, and aware of it. And so absolutely, there's some people who want to defend that and say I've never smoked cannabis, nor will I ever like cannabis, nor will I ever you know not yeah. judge anyone who does cannabis or yeah. does the weed. Well, I mean, after doing crack for four months, you kind of lose your judgment of other yeah. people. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Do you think we could try some right now? Yeah, by all means. Yeah. I brought a little uh, tester available. Um, really nice going on the skin. You can choose which scent you want, eucalyptus or uh, lemongrass. So give it a smell, see what you think. Let's see this. They're both good smells. You'll definitely smell some of the cannabis in there. Um, the lemongrass is probably the fan favorite. The eucalyptus was the initial one that I started with. Yeah, feel free to mix and match. <laughs> yeah, I like the eucalyptus better. Really? Yeah. I like the lemongrass better. Okay, well that works. So how do I, do I just like take a big scoop? So it's just about surface area, so really a, a small amount is all you need. Uh, but feel free, there's no minimum or maximum. You just simply, you, let's all say use your nail, a little okay. more so because then you can, you can judge how much you're getting. And then yeah, just rub it on your skin. If you're experiencing any pain right now, put it on there and we'll see in you know, 10 minutes uh, that it's all gone. Um, but wherever you're spreading, as long as it can cover that surface area, so just kind of feel it, uh, feel it out. And uh, yeah, if you need more, apply more. If not, you're all good. Effects can be felt from instantly to about 15 minutes, depending on what you're using it for. Um, so yeah, you'll know when you know. I already, I already feel like Wiz Khalifa. Oh yeah, <laughs> you look like him. <laughs> yeah, I get that a lot. Yeah, <laughs> the pube hairs. <laughs> so like, if I break my leg and I put this on, so it can't heal bone or do stuff with bones. <laughs> I can run a marathon. You're not the first person to ask, but uh, yeah, it can't do bone stuff. It's muscles, joints, mm -hmm. or nerves. Uh, but let's say that bone pops through your leg mm -hmm. and you know you have some open skin. You can apply it directly on open skin. What it'll do is it'll act as a like an antibacterial. Oh, nice. It'll act somewhat as a natural band-aid. I do advise going to the hospital, not just, oh, I got some salve, I'm good to go. Uh, <laughs> but it'll actually promote the healing of that, uh, that skin as well. So uh, you can either eliminate a scar that's already there or you know reduce any scarring that occurs. Oh, really? Um, and then uh, you apply it and it'll actually make that open wound heal a lot yeah. faster. And we can eat this, right? Yeah, totally safe. So Feel free, yeah, go for it. <laughs> I like the lemongrass flavor a little better. It's a little interesting. Yeah, the eucalyptus one didn't taste nearly as good as yeah. I thought it would. No, yeah. I thought it would be like a magical experience. It's like eating Vicks. Like you, no one really <laughs> dreams of eating Vicks. Well, I do, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. it's all good. At least you just lived your dream. I did, yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, it's better than Vicks, real yeah. talk. Yeah, better than Vicks. I like that. I appreciate that. Yeah, for sure, man.
So like I'm not gonna get stoned, right? Because I'm already kind of stoned. So. You yeah, by the amount you ate, probably not. No. But uh, you, you might. If you just like eat a whole jar. Yeah, I had one guy actually walk up to me at this event, and he knew about the product. He was like a friend of a friend. I didn't know him, but someone I knew recommended and said come here. And he's like. So this is a sampler, and I was like, yeah, he's like, and I'm like just telling him, yeah, you can go ahead and use it, I don't shift it out for people, I let them experience it. Mm -hmm. He's like, okay, two fingers deep, just like, <laughs> out of a big tin, and literally just pops it in his mouth, and then he's like, thanks, and then walks away, <laughs> and I was just so stunned, but you know, it's the way it goes, that's what you get for offering free samples, but then uh, a month later or something like that, I see the, our mutual buddy, and I was telling him about it, I'm like, yeah, this guy that you were with, he just came up and did this, and he's like, yeah. He was so stoned that night, it was crazy. I think he like ended up sleeping in the back of his truck, like in the truck bed just outside or some, some wild story like that. So, wow. Yeah. You should at least like, if people are going to eat it, you should at least provide them like tortilla chips or something. That's actually the best combination. Really? Lemongrass and the tortilla chips taste like Fruit Loops. Is it? Yeah. It's weird. Better Wait a minute. Than, better than salsa? Uh... I don't know. I love salsa. I'm a traditional salsa. It's true. It's yeah. like the pre. It's a. It's the appetizer, and then you end up polishing off two bags. Yeah. Of chips and salsa. Afterwards. That's true. So. You know, like when you're a kid, your parents eat chips and salsa. You're like fucking gross, guys. And then when you're like 19, you're, you're on your third bag, and you're like, I need help. I need to go back to my therapist. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So I mean, uh, what's something that's? I mean, obviously, the testimonials. Ooh. Your family and seeing how well it's affected people. Well, like, is there anything outside of that that's been really rewarding? Man, this has honestly been the most rewarding yeah. thing that I've done thus far. I'll yeah. say, like, able to serve wise. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just hearing people that I don't even know. Some people that I don't even, I haven't even sold a sap to. They just know someone that has it. They're just like completely thankful and just like keep it up. I love this product. I, I know someone that loves this product. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely amazing. So it's super fulfilling. Um, and I just want to keep doing more. Uh, I ran a campaign on Instagram uh, last month and it was called uh, my giveaway or my impact 10 day giveaway. It was a giveaway campaign. Mm -hmm. But each day it wasn't advertising. Each day I just wrote up a little synopsis of some you know positive information and and some you know beneficial quote to contemplate throughout that day. Mm -hmm. um, and what I found was it, all my clients were just absolutely uh, in love with it. You know, big companies they don't necessarily do that. They'll they'll run a heartwarming like Budweiser doggy ad, but they won't offer something uh, that's truly impactful that that shifts people's lives on top of a product that does it already. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just it, it drives me to want to give and give more. Um, and yeah, just knowing I'm helping people is. Uh, Super fulfilling. Yeah, and Budweiser tastes like piss anyway. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Exactly. Fuck that. I don't. I don't. I don't drink at all. So I'll yeah. let you taste the new batches and tell me if it's. Still I don't like really piss. drink either. Yeah. But like. But when I, I do, it's still Secchi's. True. Yes. Yeah, very good. <laughs> that was prime. No, if I have to drink, I'll drink wine. Yeah. Okay. Or like straight moonshine. Yeah. Tequila. You don't mix. I don't drink beer. Beer's so gross. Yeah. Like, why do I want to drink wheat juice? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do I look like? They today? have new cannabis beers coming out though. Really? Yeah. yeah, would you be interested in something like that? Hey man, if you could get me a lemongrass cannabis beer. Cannabis beer, I'll try it. Yeah. Okay. I might throw up a little bit inside, but like at least it'll taste good. Yeah, exactly. Lemongrass. True. It's antiseptic. Lemongrass. It'll help with the burn. Yeah. <laughs> you won't feel as much pain when you're throwing up in your friend's out. Yeah, exactly. It like pre coats your throat, you're good to go. <laughs> Have you, like, are you, are you going to try to do that actually, like cannabis beer? Or Me personally, no, that's okay. a product that's coming out. Uh, I do have some things in the coming that uh, are in the making that I'm looking to get into more of the recreational side. Yeah, any uh, tells? Any, any tells? Like, tells, like uh, in, insights? Yeah. Um, I'm thinking of uh, some sort of uh, like bubbly, bubbly drink, cannabis bubbly drink. Ooh. A new way to celebrate, because I don't drink, so I feel like sometimes when I'm you know, having a big sale day or you know some sort of celebration um, I'd love to pop a little bottle of champagne or something mm -hmm. like that so to get into that market with a cannabis infused drink um, that allows people to celebrate that's like really smart you, nobody thinks of that exactly or well I do yeah <laughs> cannabis pop 
Yeah, can I just pop, you know, to the younger demographics? For the kids, yeah. yeah. For the kids, it's all for the kids. <laughs> put it in there for the youth. For yeah. school. Put a big, you know, tropical bird with a big thumbs up on the can. Yeah. That's there was actually a study done. Uh, they found that, like, they did testing and they said that, like, apparently, like, cannabis has, like, little tenor effect on, like, an adolescent brain. Like, really? There's, yeah, there's an actual, like, scientific study done. Yeah, I gotta tell my dad that because he complained all the time. I, I thought you were gonna say, I gotta show my little cousin that. Yeah. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> Come here. Read this info. Drink this. <laughs> You're oh, it. yeah. It's just the plant in a bottle of coke. Yeah. yeah. It's infused, man. <laughs> Why does this coke have a plant in it? Shut up. Yeah. Just keep drinking. Yeah, no, but that's dope. But I'll, I'll ask you then, because I don't really drink either. How come you don't drink? Um, so I stopped drinking about like two and a half years ago, maybe three. Um, same time I went vegan. Um, I totally just went on. Um, a deeper understanding of you know what or a reflection of what alcohol did to me does to my body does to my soul does to my outlook and, and life and why was I drinking and and when I came to it it was just uh, not for me anymore. Mm -hmm. I used to work at the LC for two years so I also saw the whole dark side of what alcohol does for the you know repeat customers who come in you know twice every single day and um, they, I was told you have to sell it to them you know as long Damn. as they're not ruthless and doing anything wrong and, um, so it's just a you know it's a scary industry um, I come from a family who doesn't really drink much like at least my immediate family mm -hmm. um, so they they don't really drink much at all um, and that uh, kind of allowed me to um, have not so much the uh, cultural or you know uh, family roots in drinking and the, mm -hmm. the classic oh this is time for celebration or you need yes. a beer in your hand or you know I was really curious I drank you know, a good amount, especially when I turned 18, yeah. mm -hmm. going to the bar and everything. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just, just not for me. Yeah, don't lie. It's when you went to Cowboys, you're like, I'm done. <laughs> I've never been to Cowboys. Okay. I never wanted to step into that place. Okay, <laughs> just there last weekend. Nice. So, like, this is yeah. embarrassing. You're, yeah. dis you're disgusting. <laughs> but. So, you, this is a counseling session. <laughs> yeah, this is our intervention. This yeah. is what we're waiting for. <laughs> we brought you here for that. I just no. Just like Liz calling the cops. Or she didn't call the cops, I shouldn't say. <laughs> Liz did not call the cops, honestly. Yeah. Not yet. Yeah, not yet. She's gonna get there, though. Yeah. Um, it'll be definitely be about me first. No, but, uh, yeah, so it's kind of, you went liquor-free, and, and it's changed your life for the better, obviously. Absolutely, yeah, it's been the coolest thing ever. Like, I just have way more fun when I go out. Mm -hmm. You learn to actually have fun with alcohol. Yeah. Um, and so it's just a, I don't know, it's just a much more enjoyable time to be in a mental state and, you know, naturally create dopamine. And at the same time, you know, when I do go out, I still smoke weed, yeah. which is, you know, a good way to celebrate. Not all the time, but, uh, um, every second day, yeah. not that much. <laughs> I used to smoke it a lot more than I do now, but actually like starting the, the business, lots of people think that I'm in the cannabis industry, so I must, you know, be an everyday stoner. Mm -hmm. But, uh, to my personal opinion, if you want to operate at this level, you can't be uh, an Definitely. everyday stoner. It's, yeah. Uh, the select times when work's done where you can uh, play hard after yeah. working hard. Unwind, yeah. kick back, watch Harold and Kumar, yeah. take a toe. Yeah, but I mean, uh, when we were talking about with alcohol, it's interesting though because alcohol is legal and it's regulated and stuff like that. And yeah. It's weird because some of the effects of alcohol are worse than the effects of cannabis and it's yeah. legal and you can go buy it. And like you said, there are repeat customers showing up two, three times a day. It's like, well, you got to sell it to them. Yeah. It's all but, for a profit. Yeah, it's taken so long for weed to get out of this darkness, yeah. at least in Canada. In America, they're still, they're still working that out. Yeah. At least it's legal here. Why do you think that is? Um, so, I mean, it's legal in a lot of states, but not on a federal level. Mm -hmm. I think they're just a bigger country uh, where we have way less population. I mean, I mean, like, why do you think the viewpoint of cannabis has taken so long to get into? Oh, well, I'll tell you. There's uh, facts to this. Let's hear um, it. So, oh, uh, cannabis has been utilized for thousands of years. It has mm -hmm. been, you know, let's say it was even here before humans. Um, and it uh, is the only plant that contains all uh, the amino acids that we require for life. Mm -hmm. It is something that you can utilize as topical, mm -hmm. ingestible, smokable, ceremony, anything you want. Um, in the past hundred years is when it fell under the, uh, the dark fall of the dark ages, um, specifically due to the fact of its competing and competition with the, I'll say, four major industries or three or whatever, but the cotton industry, uh, the pharmaceutical industry, and the oil industry. I'll just list those ones. There's other industries that, that get involved as well. So for the cotton industry, the, uh, the people who were running that were also tied in. They're all tied in together, the pharmaceuticals, the uh, oil, and the cotton. They were all kind of, you know, um, 
um, monopolized together. Mm -hmm. So when they chose what they wanted to do, uh, the cannabis was the prime suspect to just wipe out because it was so versatile and able to apply in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. It was the you know kind of miracle plant medicine that you can utilize for so many different things. It's not patentable, so you can't you know own it. You can't sell it necessarily. Um, being you're the only provider, like all pharmaceutical drugs, who mm -hmm. they create some sort of new chemical, then they have it for 30 years. They build up big brands like Advil, and then all the um, the knockoffs come through, and it does the exact same thing, but they've made their billions. Mm -hmm. So for in the pharmaceutical industry, it was the you know one one size fits all uh, kind of solution. So it was it was not profitable. Mm -hmm. For the uh, petrol industry, actually the first car ran on hemp. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it was a beautiful and uh, sustainable uh, oil and, uh, and product to to utilize for it. The first cars were actually built on hemp as well. Um, so uh, it, it's such a versatile product that it was just you know clamping down on so many on so many different markets. The oil companies then found that okay we can go get the oil ourselves we own the oil we control it not just some Joe Blow who can grow his weed in our cannabis in his uh, backyard and then create the products that we're doing mm -hmm. so we're gonna create influence the industry to create engines that only run on our oil that are made out of our plastics that are made out of our oil mm -hmm. that you know can only be utilized by our oil so it's kinda you know trying to uh, blanket the whole market mm -hmm. and the cannabis is such a you know free thing anybody can plant a seed um, so it's not necessarily as uh, controllable, um, and then the cotton industry, same thing. You know, the fibers of the hemp plants or the cannabis plants are so soft and, and usable uh, in any kind of cloth or, or fabric. Now they're coming out with hempcrete, which is five times stronger and like five times lighter than regular concrete, and it's really? fire retardant and more durable. Like it's amazing uh, what you can utilize with the stalks of, of the, the hemp cannabis plants. Um, so really, it was just a one-size-fits-all that you can't, um, uh, you can't patent yeah. or yeah, bank on it. Have it. You're the sole provider uh, for it. So it was just you know it was an easy target uh, for getting rid of because everybody wants to build up their SKU list, how many products we offer, so that we can you know maximize the whole market versus this is the one thing that does it for all. Yeah. Um, which would have been way better uh, road, but that's that's the dark shadows that it's had to kind of come come through and come out of. Um, it's finally getting there. It's mm -hmm. not there at all. I personally don't agree with legalization. I believe fully in decriminalization, allowing the people to uh -huh. operate their lives the way they should, and yeah. government's a whole other story. But, yeah, exactly. Uh, really, uh, we're getting there. You yeah. know, it's it's, a, it's a, a hard unweaving from the, uh, the mental state that was created regarding cannabis, but uh, as well as it's still a step in the right direction. Do you think we'll ever get back to the point where, you know, hempcrete will become the main thing that we use for roads instead of concrete and we'll use hemp to fuel cars again? Yeah, I think so. I mean, oil... It'll I, take a while, obviously. Yeah, it'll take a long time. It depends who's in power, right? <laughs> you know, like, you put me as president uh, of the country, I'm sure we'll you know, have that happening sooner than later. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, at the same time, I... Uh, I don't want to cut my hair and become a politician, as the uh, Crosby, Still, and Nash once said, um, because then I become like them. So I'm, I'll spend my time focusing on, you know, doing what I can versus trying to win their game. Mm -hmm. um, but eventually, it'll get there. And by sure. the time, we'll probably, you know, have some other thing mm -hmm. that that solves it all: infinite energy or something like that. You yeah, know, like clap energy. Yeah, clap. I, I would be the first one to uh, yeah. give my part. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be like Olympics for that. Clap yeah. Olympics. You know what? I'm gonna look into it. So I'm pretty impressed every day. Like especially like I drive a smart car, so it's a mm -hmm. it's roomy, but it's still a closed confined space. Mm -hmm. and when you clap in there, oh fuck, it's loud. It's Give them a clap right now. That's pretty fucking. It's actually, kind of. <laughs> yeah, it hurts. Like, that's pretty. Loud. I think I'd make a difference at the MTS on their decibel reader or something. Like yes. That. You know, just one class. They should give you season. Like, they should give you season tickets. Yeah. To help. Uh, that's why we. Didn't I get sent three emails already. They haven't. <laughs> that's why we haven't got to the first round last year, man. Yeah, you know, you're clapping. Yeah, the, the make more noise signs comes on. I'm just not there. So. I could just run a clapping class and in turn you know, teach people to do it on their own, so I can spend my time doing whatever. Yeah, but then you'll get some weird perverts who misinterpreted it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah I won't put my ads on Craigslist. Or what? Dude, it's, dude, you're missing... Men looking for all wanting to clap. <laughs> <laughs> Any person wanting to clap better. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Come see Nick Cahooch. <laughs> clap extraordinaire. Yeah. 
It's weird on Craigslist. I, I I spend a lot of time on Craigslist today looking for a couch. I did just buy one. Mm -hmm. There's so many. I, after looking through all the couches, there was like three on there. I looked through almost all the Winnipeg. I, it's so strange. Some of the shit that's advertised on there. Like, like what? Like, men. Men will do anything for money. And then the comment or like the description is anything. Just like, <laughs> I could just imagine like the guy writing it and it's just being so like... I need anything for money, please. Anything! Exclamation mark! Exclamation mark! Dude, it's not cool to talk about my burner on the podcast <laughs> like that. Sorry to explain. I just want to help you. It's all good. I will do anything, by the way. Um, <laughs> but other weird shit. In like, the description of the YouTube video, it's just going to say anything. Yeah, true. Uh, you know, we'll get some weird things. Um, no, but really quickly, back to drugs uh, before we... <laughs> Which ones? <laughs> before we just, like, bastardize this podcast talking about Craigslist. Yeah. Do you believe it would be beneficial to decriminalize other drugs as well? Yes, I yeah. think all drugs should be decriminalized. I agree, I agree. Um, there's a couple countries uh, who have done that. Switzerland. Switzerland, Portugal, I think Venezuela. Venezuela. Yeah, was it Portugal? Portugal decriminalized. I think Switzerland legalized it. Yeah. They made like safe houses. Yeah, and I mean that's cool, right? Mm -hmm. But like, uh, I'm reading a book called The Tao Te Ching, and it's a spiritual text uh, mm -hmm. from a Tao uh, sage from way back in the day. Um, and one of the phrases that I heard today while listening to it was, um, if you take down the signs or stop posting the signs of do nots and like the rules and stuff like that, there will be less thieves. Uh, just because when you criminalize something, some reason naturally in our brain, uh, we have an urge to rebel and mm -hmm. go against it or go into the taboo or do something mm -hmm. like that. And so if you, you decriminalize, legalize, and you know, just make everything harmless in a sense, um, it really it, like deflates it. There's no mm -hmm. thrill in it anymore. It's like, oh yeah, that's... that's Everyone's doing that, holy shit. And then it'll turn to like, wow, I'm going to read and write because that's so cool. I'm going you know, to go to school and Criminalize learn. reading and writing. Yeah, exactly. And then we'll have the, you know, we'll be like the and smartest we'll be, country yeah. in the world. <laughs> we'll be a poet. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, no, because you're right. Because a lot of those people who are in jail or are doing those hard drugs have like issues and yeah. like mentally ill. And they're, they're deemed, you know... Uh, non-desirables. Yeah, um, crazies. And, yeah, crazies. And so what it really is, is you create a society that everyone's compassionate and loving and open and, and people can like look for help uh, when they, or support when they are, uh, you know, in times of need versus not having any support. They try something once because some, a friend gave it to them um, and then they're hooked on it and then they feel like they have to shun about it. They, they don't want to, uh, to, to tell or talk to anybody about it at all. So, yeah. Um, yeah. No, you're right. I mean, uh, Fuck, am I gonna blank on this? No, I'm not. I know, uh, because Portugal decriminalized it, and I know Switzerland legalized it, and like, they both saw massive decreases. Yeah. Switzerland's was lower than Portugal's because they actually had, like, oh, you know, you go in a room, you can do heroin. Yeah. Like, they'll give you a dose. Yeah. Then it's better because now it's not on the streets. People who have shady motives, it could be laced with other things. Exactly. Causing worse and worse stuff when it's like that. When you give a safe space, we can then unweave that history or mental patterns that are in the human psyche currently and you know come to a society that's uh, a lot more involved and compassionate and you know forward thinking and, and self-loving definitely yeah because there's no like again just to reiterate there's no point in throwing somebody who's got a coke addiction because you know things aren't going well in their life in jail like great now they hate themselves even more exactly and they're then jail culture is not you know, a not good thing. Yeah, it's not a good thing. So. Yeah. So Please, it's, man, don't knock until you try it. <laughs> I'll try anything once, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's like, I saw this really funny tweet where it's like, why do people think Batman's a superhero? All he does is beat up mentally ill people. <laughs> think about it. The Joker, Scarecrow, what two What are you us with, man? Holy crap. <laughs> like, he's just a rich guy with no powers who beats up mentally ill people. <laughs> We, we can't stand for that. Sad world we live in. It's a, it's a, it's a true Boycott world. Batman. Hashtag boycott Batman. Hashtag not my Batman. Yeah, that's the one. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Not, not my Stella's. Good times. Yeah. I used to work at Stella's when it happened. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Were you the uh, vendor or the... Uh, <laughs> it was the ascender. <laughs> well, you know, uh, like I'm in communications, so I know how tough the journalism industry is. Oh, yeah. So I knew they needed storylines. So I was like, hey, guys, let's do this. <laughs> let's do this for PR. <laughs> yeah. Rick, you touched Jessica. We fine. Yeah. Let's yeah. run through a scenario. <laughs> Get this down. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, in all seriousness, I was the representation, so that they, they're like, look, we got a minority working. <laughs> I, I said, I was at the bar, so when you walked in, you. I just thought you had a tan, man. <laughs> I remember. 
Somebody was like, yo, so I get like I get all kind of guesses for my ethnicity. Yeah. Somebody's like, are you white? I'm like, yeah. not really. Like, half, I'm half European, but like, it's not like you're like Germany, Ukraine, Scandinavian countries, like Eastern Europe, stuff like that, where it's like very fair skin. You know, it's like yeah. my mom's from Portugal, yeah. and they're kind of like they're like Spain. They're kind of dark. He's like, so you're white? I'm like, no, I'm, like not. I'm Brazilian and Portuguese. Not really white. He's like, so you're black. I'm like. <laughs> There's more than two races. No, there's not, man. <laughs> I know this. That's not what they taught me at CMU, bro. <laughs> <laughs> <That's awesome>. Yeah. <laughs> That's their intro course. <laughs> <laughs> intro to social stuff. <laughs> yeah. Intro to prejudice and biases. Is one intro to race. Yeah. The teacher just walks up to the blackboard, writes white on one side, black on the other, puts a line through. Are you just called a blackboard? <laughs> Yeah, man, with a chalk. Yeah, politically correct. I think I said chalkboard. <laughs> no. Did I say blackboard? Yeah. Shit, man. I guess I'm canceled. Yeah, you went to CMU, man. I'm canceled. Yeah, yo, CMU was a trip. Yeah. Everybody looked at me like they'd never seen a person to that tone in their life. <laughs> they probably haven't. Yeah. Maybe it's because I was wearing sweats. <laughs> That's probably more likely. <laughs> yeah. But still, you know, it is what it is. Right? It's funny, my girlfriend, she's Brazilian as well. Oh, yeah? And she went to CMU for a year or something like that. What year? Actually, three years. Yeah, was she there for 2016, 17? I think so. Did yeah, she, she did law. Did she play any sports? No. Okay. I'm like, okay, then she didn't notice the fucking angry basketball player <laughs> with the goggles. Okay. That was not me. <laughs> no, I didn't hear any stories, but uh, okay. I'll talk to you after. Oh, yeah. Or someone you know, just to get pictures. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. CMU still gives out yearbooks. Really? Like their high school. That's awesome, actually. I mean, it's kind of, it's not really, but yeah. you only take pictures in your first year, so there's like a fifth year dude with like a beard, mm. and he's like baby-faced and like looking into this camera scared. He's 17 years old, he has no idea what he's doing, now he's 22. Yeah, you'll be happy when you're 50, because then, you know, the money you spent on the degree at least went to some, some sort of book. True. <laughs> That's true. Sorry. I have a, an opinion about secondary school. Well, I thought you were going to say CMU, I was like, yes, let's turn this into CMU <laughs> slander episode. <laughs> no. Not but unless you want to get your music degree, you're fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which is a weird concept for a degree, a music degree. Yeah. Anyways, I mean, uh, Tommy, how are you doing for time? Uh, well, it's only an hour now. An hour? Uh, I'm like 40, 35. 35 or 45. Yeah. That's it? Yeah. Does it sound there? Uh, well, I guess I had to cut the, the clip in two pieces, so it's because the clip was too long. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, yeah, it's 45. Yeah, 45. Roughly 45. 45, let's keep going, let's get to an hour. Cool. Yeah, I know I'm down. Good. Okay, word. I thought we were. Oh, I thought we were an hour. Um, yeah, felt like an hour and a half, yeah. but a good hour and a half. Yeah, very, very good. <laughs> um, okay, let me think. Can okay, you have any questions? You, you said save me. Um, okay. Do you want to chat about the uh, like my South America experience or ayahuasca or anything like that? Oh, yes. I have one. Cool. <laughs> Edibles. Edibles. Let's talk about edibles. For okay. Me. Are those safe? Like, in... ah, hi. <laughs> like... I had a hard time on them last week. But <laughs> <laughs> they're safe in moderation. You were in a folk fest band, so I'm not surprised. Oh. Yeah, yeah. That's where the other stuff came out. Of. Yeah. I mean, like, could you ever create like a safe edible? Yeah, definitely. And it's just all I'd say safe edible is education um, and proper dosage. Mm -hmm. So not selling a cookie that's this big that has 100 milligrams of THC in it. So that you, you know, oh, it's just an edible, it's not labeled, pop it in, and then you're... Challenge yourself. Yeah, you're literally like cerebral palsy on the ground, not knowing <laughs> what the future looks like. Or knowing fully what the future looks then like. You're hearing, <laughs> then you're hearing colors and shit. Exactly. I mean, like, I've been there too. So yeah. like, <laughs> seeing sounds. I love rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> so loud. Yo, you know, something that irked me was, you know in Taylor Swift's song, she's like... Sorry, I don't listen to her. No. <laughs> Okay, we're cutting this thing. Fuck you. No. Okay, so she released a new song, and one of her lyrics is like, one of these things is not like the others, like a rainbow with all of the colors. That's a normal rainbow. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, I told you I don't listen to it. Okay, well, I don't, I don't. she's trying to fucking shut me down at this point. <laughs> You're canceled, bro. I, hey, you know you've made it when you get canceled. When people care enough to try to cancel you, yeah. that's how you know you've well, made it. Well, I just got canceled from a market, actually, so that's cool. It's not on Twitter, it doesn't count. They didn't get cancelled on Twitter. Like, it's not, not collaborative. Yeah. I'll cancel you on Twitter if you want. Yeah. That'll get you. I'll make one and then cancel me. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Okay, let's talk about uh, your trips to 
where was it? Um, South America. Yeah, South America, Antarctica. Yeah, pretty much the same place. <laughs> Saw penguins in both. It's the southern hemisphere. Yeah. It's all the Saw same the shit. edge of the flat earth. All well. the same shit. Yeah, true. <laughs> it's next to the ice wall, right? Yeah, exactly. Have you seen the ice wall? Uh, yeah, it's not as big as you'd expect. It's not that big? Yeah. It's like an ice porch. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you know? I'd say it's like an ice love seat compared to a couch, you know? No it's recliner. Like, yeah, it's just like a little step that you can jump off into yeah. the universe. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, space is fake too, so. Yeah. What well, who really, knows what's beyond the dome? What really is bes behind the ice wall? Yeah, I can't. I'd have to kill you if I told you. That's true. Yeah. You've been talking to Eddie Bravo recently. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so let's just talk about your trips. How, how so, long? Yeah, I, I did uh, four months in South America. Mm -hmm. I did uh, Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru. Mm -hmm. uh, I spent most of my time in Ecuador. Um, went down there specifically for spiritual journey. Um, so I did what ayahuasca. That? So uh, I've always been researching, you know, ayahuasca, DMT, stuff like that. Heard about it you know, being involved in cannabis. And this just become a Joe Rogan podcast? Uh, probably. I, t I think I'm a pretty suitable guest for his, uh, for his, Ro for his uh, podcast. Yeah. Not as slick as Elon Musk, or a little, not as rigid, I'd say. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. You're like an Elon-Jesse Ventura hybrid. Yeah. 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 Minus the politician and wrestling, but, you know. Yeah. Something like You'll that. get there. Yeah, so you, <laughs> went to, you went to do ayahuasca. Yeah, so I did ayahuasca. I drank uh, in ceremony about nine times mm -hmm. uh, over the course of the four months. What is ayahuasca? Um, ayahuasca, no it's a vine and a mix, or sorry, a vine and a leaf mm -hmm. uh, mixed together in a tea. Um, and what it does is one contains DMT and one contains an MEO inhibitor. So we have a compound in our body that inhibits, um, uh, not extracting, but uh, indulging, you know, absorbing. Uh, DMT, mm -hmm. um, and so one inhibits those receptors, and so it allows the DMT to pass into you. DMT is located in your uh, pineal uh, gland in your head. Um, it's said to be something that's released upon death or near-death experiences, the gateway to heaven and the afterlife, stuff mm -hmm. like that. When you drink in the jungle, you get to experience DMT uh, without being pushed towards death. Um, some people go through death experiences and ego death and you know uh, expansive um, ways of thinking. Um, and really life-changing, life-revolutionary re uh, experiences. Um, so that's what the plant is. It's just, you know, jungle juice. They've been making it for thousands of jungle years. Juice. Yo, man, it's the best jungle juice in the, in the jungle. So do you, how hard did you trip out? So, like, uh, yeah. Like pretty hard. Probably the hardest I've ever tripped. Really? Um, just because it's like, you do it at night, so you drink at like 10 p.m. at night time. You're done at maybe like 6 or 7. Um, but... Um, yeah, you are laying in your hammock or on your mat in the ground, in the dirt, and you really are just not in your body. You are experiencing a whole another world. Um, and like the, the few times you puke probably a lot, it, it involves purging, so the body will mm -hmm. uh, purge negative energy, actual, you know, negative buildup in your intestines and stomach and stuff like that along the way. Sometimes you'll end up needing to go poo as well. Um, the walk to the bathroom on ayahuasca is never fun because your legs do not work and your vision is not reality. But if you end up making it there one way or another, and making it there, I mean, you end up pooing. Uh, who knows if it's in the bathroom? <laughs> who knows where it goes, man? Yeah. This but, tree looks good. Yeah, it, is, it looks like as far as I'm going to get, so I might as well just relax into it. Bro, at that point, you don't know what a tree is. You're yeah. like, ah, oh, it's coming. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, it's a hard trip. Uh, it's a wonderful experience. Mm -hmm. um, you can't really encompass what it is. Like what I, in short, what I say is, it's a mirror. It reflects what's going on internally, uh, and we are infinitely deep beings. So there is so much going on, um, and so many different ways to express it. We are not just this flesh and body. So you're able to see past the veil uh, and experience yourself in reality in so many different ways. Um, in my opinion, they all work together. So you know, the more you drink, the more they weave into each other and. Uh, takes you on a really long journey um, of experience, and it's absolutely uh, life-shattering. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I'm a completely different person today than I would have been, or than I was before. Um, I was already on a spiritual path, and you know, whether it be you know in psychedelic uh, taking of uh, mushrooms or yeah. LSD or smoking DMT stuff like that, I did that previous. Mm -hmm. uh, but the ayahuasca was. Uh, What's led you to that? Like, what kind of prompted you to go down this journey? Um, just an internal calling. Part of it was probably the concussions as well, as everything plays a role in your life. Mm -hmm. um, the concussion caused me to have no memory of my childhood. 
So I was able to move past my traumas that nice. I experienced uh, as a child, but also create new traumas of not having any grounded mm -hmm. uh, ability to look at myself. So like I would see people talking about their childhood and be like, no, I don't have that. You know. Mm -hmm. So this sense of lack came with it. So just an urge to constantly develop myself, uh, an inner knowing that self-development is the you know, true purpose of life and not just you know, how much money you have or what kind of girl you can score or how many beers you can drink, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I was always more attracted to that, um, especially, you know, I started psychedelic experiences in high school. I'd say cannabis is in a uh, psychedelic now, especially, mm -hmm. um, and so that started in about grade eight, grade nine. Um, so it's it been a part of my life for a while. Um, but then specifically ayahuasca, I'd always wanted to try it. I was at a point in my life where, you know, I was uh, open to it, not scared, um, and I had, you know, some loving individuals uh, guide me in the direction and, and my first experience, I actually did it, like a 10 day trip into the jungle mm. uh, with a tribe and a shaman and I was living in the bush. We built our hut that we drank the ayahuasca and it was like total primal experience. So it was really cool to go into those roots and uh, experience that. Um, but always on a self and a transform, transformative journey, uh, constant evolution. Upward spiral. How did it change you? Like, what were some what were some things that you noticed? Well, I mean, it changed me in how I relate to people. Mm -hmm. um, my compassion for people and love uh, for everyone I encounter really expanded. Um, my you know, inner circle was way more inclusive. Um, my uh, frugalness <laughs> expanded. I used to own a BMW uh, when I got back from South America. I sold it mm -hmm. and bought a van. <laughs> like, I went nice. full full circle from you know, let's say egotistic life to a non-egotistic life um, but at the end of the day what I equate that to is it just taught me truly about like self-love so you reflect to everyone you treat everyone how you treat yourself you know if you're hard on yourself you're hard on everyone around you mm -hmm. um, if you don't truly love yourself on some deep levels you don't truly love anyone around you so it allowed me to heal those things in myself with myself and then it just you know uh, reflected outwards and, and now my relationships my uh, encounters and, and Really, everything is uh, improving and, and mm -hmm. being way more peaceful and loving and, and enjoyable. Nice. Uh, do you think that's where, like, psychedelics and DMT and that kind of stuff, do you think that's where religious experience comes from? 100%. Because I know, like, when I went to St. Paul's, they're mm -hmm. telling us, like, of all these miracles that prove that prove that Catholicism is the way to go and that the Christian God is the one true God. And, like, you know, I was a sheltered kid, so I ate it up. And then I yeah. talked to other people from different religions, and they're telling me the same stories. And, like, the gears are moving. I'm like, Hey, okay. What's on? The fuck is going on? Yeah. <laughs> like obviously, I mean, God's manifesting himself. If you want to call it God or whatever spiritual being you believe in, it's manifesting itself to people in different ways. So why is this happening? And yeah. you know, with the thing that's all in our brain, that's the common denominator, mm -hmm. it starts to make more sense. Yeah. And I think it all like I don't know if it's the spawn of religious experience, like you know, the ape theory, the stone ape theory mm -hmm. of monkey smoking or eating some magic mushrooms, and then that's how consciousness evolved. Mm -hmm. I think we're beyond that. I, I couldn't say what happened, you know, a couple million years ago. Um, but uh, in regards to, you know, ongoing experience, how our culture is set up, how we relate to each other, I think uh, psychedelics have been influenced and used through and through ever since the beginning um, for journeys, ex uh, searching, cleansing, and stuff like that. And I think we need it more than ever now. So before it was kind of, you know, respected and really infused in the culture already so you can naturally get the benefits of a psychedelic experience just growing up in a culture that was already influenced by the plant or the medicine. And now we've, you know, deviated so far from harmonious living that that's when the plants can really step up. And that's why they're really coming into people's lives more. And, you know, we have the internet. You can research anything and get your hands pretty much on anything mm -hmm. um, nowadays. So really being able to... Uh, show up and it show up for us is, is something that's hugely beneficial. Do you think that everybody, everybody should try it? I was at the thinking that yes, everyone, like before, everyone mm -hmm. should. When I was on ayahuasca, I learned mm -hmm. that, you know, I need to share ayahuasca with as many people as I can. Um, I haven't necessarily, I've encouraged some to do it. It's, you know, hard to convince someone to go, you know, spend a lot of money and go into the jungle and drink some juice, um, especially if they're not as, you know, explorative as I am. Yeah. But, um, I think I just lived the ayahuasca experience through, and that's what I've learned. It's not everyone needs to do the psychedelic experience. My dad doesn't uh, want to, to drink ayahuasca, yet being living with me and experiencing me, especially as I grew uh, and 
where I am now, he's experiencing the benefits of what ayahuasca. So I think it can be kind of, you know, secondhand in a sense as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not for everyone. You know, some people, I had an experience where uh, you're not supposed to drink it with uh, any kind of mental instability. I had a lady in one of the experiences say she drank it before, she had a crazy breakdown in the middle of it and then told us later, yeah, she's got some mental problems. Mm -hmm. I had to take control while on ayahuasca, the shaman didn't know what to do, and I had to run the whole ceremony while tripping on ayahuasca. It was a beautiful experience for me to step into that leadership mm -hmm. role, but, you know, that's a case where it necessarily isn't for everyone. What do you mean mental problems? Or like like mental schizophrenia or oh, something okay, like that. Because okay. then it'll just, if you're already not mentally stable, it shakes up your mental mm -hmm. state. And so the benefit of it, of it, if you're mentally stable in a sense, it'll shake up your mental state and then what settles is actually who you are versus the constructs that you build up around yourself. Mm -hmm. If you're not a stable person and it'll shake you up, then you'll just start grasping and trying to build yourself again. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, that's not everyone. That's like few, few and far between. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't have any worries. If, if you haven't experienced any kind of episodes now, yeah. uh, then you're probably good to go. You're gonna do, are you ever going to do Burning Man? No, that's not no. really. Oh, well, maybe you know, maybe. like never no. say never, right? Justin Bieber, but uh, yeah. <laughs> um, definitely, you know, one day uh, that's an ex that can be an experience. Yeah. Um, definitely not, probably not Coachella, but Burning Man might be. I'd, I'd love to go to Burning Man as like a fifty-year-old. Yeah. Yeah, like just wear like a speedo, ride my bike. Not fucking that has, like, Just keep your pouch out. Yeah, you know what? That sounds like more like maybe a fanny pack that's to the back, yeah. just so I can still you know carry my joints and my DMT pipe. It's yeah, like and that. I'd be more self-conscious about my asshole than my yeah. dick and balls. Yeah, I've come to love my asshole. So, I can, if you want to talk about the podcast, I can, I can help you do Just that. say it right now. Yeah. I know. It's a loving stroke. <laughs> a lot, a lot yeah. of people tell me, like, I wish I had old man confidence where I could just let my dick hang in the locker room. I'm like, what's preventing you, man? Just exactly. drop the towel. Just go to the YMCA, man, and learn from the best. <laughs> it's just a dick. Yeah. Everybody's seen it. Yeah. Especially mine. I posted it. <laughs> That's why I'm canceled on Twitter. Check my yeah. Instagram. <laughs> exactly. It's all my highlights. Uh, boys, let's do another quick time check. Uh, it's it's uh, an hour. An hour now. An hour? Yeah. Okay. Uh, how do you feel? Good. I feel pretty good about this. I really like good. doing this. I had, a lot of, I had a lot of fun. Thanks, man. Well, let's wrap it up. Yeah, sure. Okay, is there anything else you'd like to say, plug, talk about before we head out? Yeah, I'll plug something. Can Go I do it right now? Yeah. Cool. cool. So if you uh, want to come check me out, uh, I do farmer's markets Thursday and Saturday. Uh, the downtown Winnipeg farmer's market, I'm at the True North Square uh, with Prairie Sun Healing, so for all your pain relief needs, as well as at the Bronx Park uh, farmer's market um, on Saturdays at 9 to 2 uh, on Henderson there. And feel free to check us out, prairiesunhealing.ca, uh, Prairie Sun Healing on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. Uh, post healthy recipes, stuff like that, and uh, yeah, keep loving your neighbor. That's yeah, what I really got to offer. Word. This is us signing off on Winnipeg's finest, Nick. Thank you again so much. Thank I you guys. Appreciate yeah, it. It's been a pleasure. This is awesome. Good to see you again. And uh, we'll post his address in the link below so you can just go hound him. Uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. This is us signing off. Have a good week. Peace out. Peace. Thanks, Peace, guys. <laughs>